Robin, how are you doing? Hi. What's Good. happening? Uh, not much. Just have a really like nice day, and I've just finished teaching a yoga class. Good. How's the yoga teaching going? Yeah, loving it. Yeah. Really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. So been probably like doing that for about two years now. Two years. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So qualified back in 2016, and now doing it really regularly. So at least like two or three classes a week now. Amazing. We will get on to yoga very soon, and I've actually got quite a few questions for you as well mm -hmm. from some folk. Um, so I hope you're ready for that. I've not prepped you for that. Yeah. I've not told you about <laughs> them. So we'll no see how they go. Um, so yeah, just basically, uh, first of all, thanks so much for coming on and having a chat. Um, and yeah, just basically tell everybody who you are and what you do. Okay. Uh, so I'm a yoga teacher, obviously. Yep. Uh, so I'm Robin. Uh, Robin does yoga. That's the one. Oh, yeah, on Instagram. On Instagram. Well, that's it. Um, I write a blog as well. I used to work in social media, used to work in retail, but kind of have always loved yoga my whole life. So decided a couple of years ago that I would decide to do that as almost like a sideline, but you know, you never know. It's always going to be a part of my life. So definitely. It definitely shaped my career. But so I just love teaching people. Cool. So, I mean, the first thing I was going to ask you anyway, like you are, Robin does yoga. So that is the first thing we're going to talk about. Yep. So obviously a big passion of yours. So but yeah, how did you get into yoga? Um, first of all, like going and doing yoga and then how did it lead into teaching? So probably about, um, I was about 16 years old, I think. So I was in school doing exams and stuff. I was really struggling with like anxiety, like stress, not necessarily school related, but obviously like school pressures and stuff like that. Yep. Was having like a lot of like mental health issues, which I'm sure you'll ask me about. Yeah, of course. But um, that kind of drew me towards finding something that could keep me, that I could find like some sort of meditation out of. Amazing. So I was scared to go to classes. Like I couldn't dream, and anyone that knows me now would laugh when I say that. Like I wouldn't have dreamt of going into a gym or a studio or anything. So I found like yoga with Adrian or like there was this uh, yoga teacher called like Tara Styles, I think her name was. Yeah. So it was like YouTube videos, like just doing like 15 minute, 20 minute yoga tutorials online in my bedroom, like couldn't hold a downward facing dog to save myself. Like I was well, terrible start at somewhere. it. somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> and I think I just sort of fell in love with the fact that I could take 15 minutes away from life and like the worries that were going on in my head because when you're trying to do a co complicated pose even though it's not really that complicated on the outside you're holding your body up you're using muscles yeah. you're you're trying to sort of contort your body you don't think about anything else and you also focus on your breath and I mean, you have the really relaxing voice of whoever is on the the other end of the screen yeah and I think that really appealed to me and eventually I sort of worked up the courage to go to a studio. I'll give them a little plug as well. Uh, Infinity. So Colette that owns Infinity is... Where's that? This, it, so it's in the Merchant City. I've heard that a lot. Osborne a lot Street. of people talk about it, but yeah, I haven't actually been... Obviously, I've never done yoga, which I'm sure you'll chin me for at some yep. point. But, uh, but <laughs> yeah, so I think I, I, that must be, that's one of the bigger ones in Glasgow, or more popular. Yeah, so it's really popular. It's probably one of the longest lasting yoga studios in Glasgow, yep. I would say people might slate me for saying that, but uh, they're a hot yoga studio, but they do like a lot of non-heated classes okay, cool. and stuff as well. And I think I went to one of their lunchtime 45 minute classes one day and I, I remember so vividly going to Colette, who is now a really good friend of mine. Nice. Um, That's when you were, you were like most, 16? I, I must have, must have been older. maybe about 18. I think I was at, I think I was at uni right. at the time. So I had obviously like lunch times yeah. off and went down to this yoga class and I remember like trying to figure out what to wear like I had no idea didn't uh, own any sports kit or anything so I had like leggings and like a baggy top or something went into Clint and I was like I've never done like proper yoga before and she was like well what have you done like have you moved your body at all like have you been doing stuff like have you been trying to stretch and I was like well I've, I've tried I used to like dance in school so she was like you'll be absolutely fine honey like just do what you can like if you can't manage something just you know, sit down, yeah. relax. 
And I got through the 45 minutes, and it was probably the best 45 minutes of my life, and it was probably the best decision I've ever made. Amazing. So I fell in love with it. I had never tried like one of their hot classes, so yeah. I decided to go and do one of the hot classes, and it took me... Now, from doing that first, like, non-TID class, it was 45 minutes and pretty gentle, to doing a hot class, it probably took me about six months to work up the courage. And I remember the day I walked in and I was like, Colette, I'm coming to a hot class. And she was like, well done, you. And I came out and it was amazing. And I'm not, I'm not a hot yoga fan, but it was just taking that step to yeah. go and do it. And then I got the bug. Like, I was just in love with it. And I've done many different classes and, like, lived in different places and tried classes all over the place. Yep. And it's just, I think it's something that you can do anywhere and it's so accessible to everyone of every age, every ability, every size, every shape. Like, no matter what, there's a yoga for you. Yeah. And it's so much more about mentally escaping as it is about physically using your body. Yeah. And that's Amazing. what I love about it. That's great. Like, obviously, leads on to the next thing about teaching. So, mm -hmm. two years ago, Yes. I, don't, I think I actually remember we met up for a coffee. Yeah. Because I was talking to you oh about blogging, goodness, which yay. I still haven't done. That's not my fault. No. The guy <laughs> doing my website is at it. I'm still waiting oh, on no, this I'm website. Still, <laughs> still waiting like two years still later. Waiting. But um, but yeah, so that was <laughs> I hope your. He doesn't listen to your podcast. Oh, it's fine. He's like my best mate. So okay. um, I've been on him for the last yeah. four years about this. But anyway, it'll be up one day soon. Yeah. He promises me. But yeah, I remember that day and um, you were talking about it then. You were like scared yeah. about, you know, I don't know if I should do it or not. Yeah, because I, I hadn't done it. You yeah, I hadn't no, done it. I hadn't. Oh, I remember that. You were, you were pretty, I think you were pretty like, and I know you wanted to do it, but I think yeah. you were just possibly scared of I process think was, or whatever it was. But Yeah, because I think there's like so many different ways you can do it. And I did it probably the most complex way where I went down to London and did it and I always had a fascination with London anyway. Oh, you went for your course there? So oh, I did so my you did. Course Was that like two weeks or something? So I did it for a month and Amazing. then went back for like two or three weekends. So it was like a lot of travelling up and down and I spent so much money. Like it was ridiculous. I don't even know. I must have like piled up all of my salary and just put it all yeah. into that. Um, probably still in debt from it. That's what overdrafts are for. Yep, that's, how yep. I, that's how I paid for my first gym instructor <laughs> course, the overdraft. I know, I'm still paying for it now, yeah. but I w don't regret it at all. Like, yep. I'll probably never make it back in teaching. Yeah. But yeah, like, I remember that now that you've reminded yeah, yeah. me. And that I was, I was so scared because everyone said to me, oh, it'll be great, like, you'll be so good at it. And I was so, I think, Compared to myself now, I look back and I think I didn't know my own voice. Like, I didn't know what I was capable of. And then I remember after the process, like, the teacher training course, halfway through it, I had, like, a, a bit of an epiphany moment where I thought, oh, I can do this. Like, I actually can yeah, do yeah. this. And I'm, I have a voice to speak with. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that was always a fear of mine is I used to hold back on things, even though I'm, like, a chatty person. I used to hold back a lot on what I thought and what I wanted to say because I was scared of what people thought of me. Yeah, that's a very natural thing. And being in front of a class of however many people, you can't not say anything. Yeah. Because you have to instruct them and they're at your beck and call. They'll do everything. If you raise your hand, they'll raise their hand. And I think having that, almost having that power with people made me realise that what I had to say was worthwhile and it translated a lot into how I felt about myself, which was a massive change because there's so much you can learn through yoga, but doing that teacher training, even if I had decided to never teach again, it was probably m one of the most rewarding things I ever did. Definitely. And it's the exact same for myself in terms of, yeah. you know, n you know, knowing I wanted to become a personal trainer at some point, mm -hmm. but just like scared of the process or if I would be good enough or whatever. But I think you'll agree that obviously putting yourself into such a uncomfortable position, mm -hmm. a scary position is probably yeah. the best thing you'll ever do because you learn so much about what you're capable of or what Absolutely. your your confidence levels obviously. Is that what it done for you, that course? Did it just basically make you realise that fuck I can do this if I you know, if I really want to? Yeah, I th I think it made me see my capability because I have forever been what do I, I say I've got like an inferiority complex because I've never thought I was good enough, no matter what I was doing. And I st like still from time to time get that and think, yeah. do you know what, I'm, I'm crap, I, I can't that. do this. 
or you know, I'm not good enough and everyone else is better than me. But being told by, you know, someone who you're paying a lot of money to, so like obviously they're gonna tell you good things because they want you to pass. But also just like people that I would teach, they'd be like, Oh, you're really good and even to this day when you know, friends of mine come to a yoga class that I do, and they've maybe never seen that side of me. Yeah. They've only ever seen, like, you know, daft Robin that's <laughs> just, like, you know, likes a glass of wine uh, and yeah. or whatever, I don't know, like, just they've never seen, like, my authoritative side. Yeah. Um, when they come to a class, they're like, oh, you're, you're so commanding, and you have, like, all this confidence. And I think, well, that does translate to my life sometimes, but it reminds you when you're in that space that you're capable and you can do it, and I think, being able to do that every day or every couple of days or however many times a week you teach. And yeah. you find that with personal training. It's Definitely, like of someone listens to you and what you have to say means something. Yeah, of course. And obviously there's that, you know, that feeling of helping someone. Absolutely. This is the best feeling ever. Yeah. But you hear it all, you hear it all the time, I'm sure, and amongst your friends as well, how many times people will say, like they'll tell you they want to do something yeah. and then, but they'll say, but I can't, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Or do they'll see you doing something and go, I wish I could do that or that. But you're just like, well, why not? Yeah, like, that's that's a big thing I get a lot. You'll get it as well on like Instagram or people that follow you. They'll be like, oh, I wish I could do that. Like with your yeah, Ironman training, I'm course. sure a lot of people will be like, oh, I'm so like in admiration of what you can do. And you think, well, you know, a few years ago probably couldn't have done exactly. it. Exactly. But yep. I decided to. It's all to. about, right? And the simplest thing is just taking the step to do it. Yeah, yeah. And making that first move. It's so like I feel. I like to post about, talk about, making sure people know they should push themselves out of comfort mm -hmm. zones and being scary is a good thing. But, but the thing I think is like, people just read it and think it's so fucking cheesy or like yeah. people, it's just such a thing that somebody that's tr trying to be motivational says, but it genuinely is the truth. It's, it's so true that like, scary situations you need to put yourself in them or you just won't mm. experience certain things in life that you yep. you will if mm. you do that because i just be being safe all the time it's just yeah. you just don't get the like i would never have done the iron man i would never be Absolutely. a personal trainer i'd still be in the bank if i didn't put myself into those mm. scary uncomfortable situations mm. but i guess it's easy to tell somebody it's harder for them to actually physically do it but yeah. that's why me and you are doing mm -hmm. what we're doing and like trying to put it out there as much as sometimes you feel nobody's listening or you f as yeah. you say people just pop it off as some motivational quote but it's not it's, it's the truth yeah and you'll be like me you'll feel like you talk in cliches a lot or you know, just tell people to do something or believe in themselves yeah. Yeah. Or you, you could fire all these things out day after day on instagram and they don't mean anything but when it comes from a place of i've been there yeah. like i've done it totally. and i like i read a really good book and it was I don't know the author's name off the top of my head but it was feel the fear and do it anyway and that spoke really strongly to me because it was about you know you're always gonna think something bad's gonna happen yeah but you could like get on a plane and think that the plane's gonna crash and like nine times out of ten nine and a half times out of ten it's not gonna happen yeah. but you could live like go through that whole flight thinking that the plane's gonna crash and see if it does it doesn't matter whether you're fearing it or not and I think, like, if you fear everything all the time, you'll never do it. And eventually you'll stop getting on the plane yeah. and stop doing something that you want to do. Exactly. Purely because you're scared. And just essentially holding yourself back yeah. from your own capabilities or mm -hmm. what your, truly, your true potential is and uh, missing out on stuff, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. I was going to ask you some questions at the end. One of them is actually one of my questions now, so okay. we'll just get that done now. Okay. So sorry for whoever asked this question. <laughs> that I'm asking it. Uh, for anyone who hasn't done yoga before, okay. uh, why should they start? And uh, what does it was it was it do for the person? What are the main benefits? Okay, so firstly, you don't have to do yoga. I wouldn't like say that every. I do think but everyone should. I, do I, yoga. Well, exactly. That's <laughs> what. I, that's what I mean. You but as a t like for me, I think yeah. everyone should exercise. So uh -huh. I would say why. So if you for you, okay. your perspective, mm -hmm. like just me, I've never done it. You yeah. tell t like why should I? Get you if, yoga. if if obviously there are certain benefits that you would think yeah. would help me, but I don't know them. Mm -hmm. I think for purely on a physical basis to start with, which is the thing that most people can relate to, because. Most people either sit at a desk all day 
and don't move their body, so then they get stiff. Yeah. Or they have a job where they're hunched over, maybe they're on their feet all day, they work in retail, you know, like they then get stiff or they work in a bar and they have like odd hours and they don't, you know, they don't take the time to exercise. Or you do exercise a lot and you just don't take the time to stretch because you've made the, you've carved the time out of your week to go and exercise. You yeah. think, where am I going to find that extra, yeah. even 15 minutes, never mind an hour of totally. a yoga class. Yeah. And I think purely looking at it physically, stretching your muscles and like moving just like the fascial tissue. So even if you hold a stretch for like a longer period of time, not necessarily like doing a dynamic, <laughs> just like bashing the Sorry. microphone around. Not even doing like a dynamic stretching sequence, but just holding a pose for a while. It releases like a lot of tension. It releases a lot of emotional things that are going on in there because we tense up when we feel scared, when we feel anxious, when we yeah. overuse muscles, we kind of completely tense up. And when you start to release that fascial tissue, it kind of makes space for things to happen. And that's when it transforms more into like the mental benefits of yeah. it. Okay. And I think it just gives you that space and it gives you more clarity. And the more you take maybe 15, 20 minutes to switch off and, you know, don't do it in front of the TV. Is yeah. The easiest way to get into it is yeah. put the TV on, do a list of stretches or put on a video and do all the stretches. Yeah. But actually, once you get into that space where you know your little sequence, you do like five stretches, you hold them for maybe like three minutes each, then you kind of think oh, well, maybe I'll put on some, like, relaxing music. Yeah. Or maybe I don't need to listen to anything. I might light a candle. And then eventually you get into that sort of meditative state where you think, right, what's going on in my head? Like, I've taken 15 minutes out of my day. I'm making time for me. It's a bit of self-care. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people need to get out of yoga because they are so busy rushing here, there, and everywhere. Stress, I don't have man. time. Stress everywhere. Stress, so much stress. I don't have time. I can't do this. And... That's one thing that yoga did for me is I'm still like quite an anxious person, but I've learned to manage it more through being able to take time out. So yeah. I completely switch off at least a couple of hours a week, whether that be in small increments yeah. or whether it be an hour's class, maybe like half an hour stretching after the gym, but it's completely with no distraction. Yeah. And I think the no distraction part of it is the huge bit. And you even get that in a class because there's there's nothing else going on. There's only other people. Yeah. But if, once you learn to block out other people, you then have to only focus on you. And, you know, all you can hear is your own breath and the teacher. And eventually that becomes quite a really nice space to think, I've taken an hour out of my day yeah. that I didn't need to take what am I benefiting from? I'm doing something good for my body, but I'm also giving myself space. Definitely. Do you still get that when you're teaching, or is it different when you're teaching? Teaching takes like a different kind of energy because you're, con you're constantly you focus talking. You on other people and stuff as well. You're focusing on other people. You're constantly talking. I don't, I don't do a lot of the poses. I might demonstrate stuff, but I jump in and out of stuff. So I'm not, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you must get like loads of workouts in when you're teaching. And I think, well, I don't actually. Yeah. I don't do half of the class. I don't do most of the class. So you actually. people fucking think, ah, yeah, trading with my clients. I'm yeah. like, I would be dead if I trained I know, like all imagine? that time a day. I wouldn't be able to stand up. But yeah. yeah, so it must be. So it's a bit different when you're teaching. So you need to make your own yeah. time out with your classes and all that to do it for you yeah. as well. So I do it for myself, and a lot of people think that you must do because I know a lot of yoga teachers. I, I think I am quite different from some yoga teachers that do have like a daily practice that they maybe get up at like six a.m. doing hours vinyata practice or yeah. whatever their class their their own practice is and what they're doing themselves and i totally admire them that's not my style it, that's not what i want to get out of it i love going to classes i love still going to different teachers but my own practice is purely a lot of it is physical when i stretch and most of it is like meditation and just sitting for a long period of time and switching off and maybe like stretching off a few muscles but yeah mostly relaxation do does it help someone's performance in the gym um in terms of a uh, say someone who's quite tight in mm -hmm. certain areas and can't really squat very low or mm -hmm. shoulder say you know range of motion if they're tight there mm -hmm. can it help with that 100 percent. as i think 
I think that's yeah. uh, I, I you know <laughs> I say it myself all the time every time I squat I'm like here. I'm so tight man yeah. um, squats especially yeah. I think with squats there's loads and loads of loads of mobility drills yeah. that are basically yoga that you can do to improve a squat and I think I've always been quite lucky in that I came to yoga first or yoga found me I don't know however you want to look at yeah. it so when I decided to then start working out so like I do train yeah. I find things like squats so much easier yeah. I probably recover a little bit faster than other people. I still get like crazy sore and can't walk <laughs> up the stairs, but I probably don't have as much muscle soreness purely because I've stretched out yeah. those muscles and I take the time to also do it every day. So I don't get as tight. I still do get tight, but I find range of motion is so much bigger, which can really mm. impact on someone's training if they take it really seriously. Yeah, definitely. Um, because... I guess it's just all, as you say, it's just like, you know, I'll tell myself that, but mm-hmm. then I'll be like, in a rush. Yeah. And after training, I'm like, oh, well, I'll, I'll do it another day or I'll do it later, and it never kind of happens. So mm-hmm. it's good to know that um, it can help. Yeah. Does it annoy, does people, do you find that you get a lot of like yoga bashers <laughs> or like people <laughs> that slate it or say it's pointless or anything? Like, I'm not going to lie, yeah. I, I was training somebody earlier and told them I was doing a podcast with someone, a uh, yoga teacher and stuff, uh-huh. and he was like, I mean, what even, what even is yoga? Like, what is, like, I don't, does it even do anything? So, like, obviously, yeah. there's somebody right away who just has no yeah. idea or thinks it's maybe a bit useless, you know? So, do you find that quite a lot, though? Do you find a bit of hate towards it? Uh, not until this guy, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'll not name any I hope names. He, I hope he's listening. <laughs> um, I'll get to listen. Yeah, I mean, you do get a lot of people that say things like, oh, yoga, that's not really for me, or oh, yoga, like, mm, that's a bit, or it's a woman's thing, like, it's an automatic, it's actually not, though. What it's he said... It's the complete opposite. I get that. But what he said was, uh, oh, is it just a form of meditation? Uh-huh, okay, Andrew. yeah. And I think... You think she just yeah. said like that, the whole thing? Yeah, or it's a whole bunch of, like, girls in crop tops, Aye. you know, like, bouncing around a room. I think there's really bad connotations of yoga but it's sort of a mix between the two like I think you can either go down like the fitnessy route of yoga which I actually kind of teach I don't do a lot of the like meditation stuff in my classes my classes are very much tailored to people that work out because I teach in a lot of gyms and I know that people are sore and like I work out myself so I get what they need and I get what stretches they need and I think that's such a really accessible way of yoga and I think if you get the the byproduct of it is the meditation and I think a lot of people if they just introduced yoga stretches into their workout routine they'd benefit a lot from it yeah yeah definitely moving on to a slightly different topic Mm -hmm. you used to work in fashion and retail Mm -hmm. and you moved to London Mm -hmm. for, for that what what was that like in terms of like decide well one deciding to do it because that's a pretty major. What age were you? Twenty something. I was. I must have been twenty two. Okay, so twenty two yeah. years old is quite yeah. a major life decision. Maybe twenty two. So I mean that must have been really scary. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, just talk us through kind of um, the decision of doing it. How scared were you, and what made you actually just go for it? What was your what was your reasoning? I think I did it for all the wrong reasons. And I'll be completely honest, and I think everyone that knows me kind of knows that now, and there's a reason I've moved back to Glasgow, basically. Um, I went down because I was fascinated with London. I think I said that earlier. Like, I was completely fascinated by the idea of it. I did my yoga teacher training there, which kind of was an incidental thing. But when I was down there, I fell in love with it, like, made really good friends out of it. One of my best friends still lives down there. And sadly don't see her very often and we like but we still talk a lot and I think I just thought I really want to do this and I was going to find any way possible to do it so I moved down for a job that seemed like the dream job so I worked in like a like fitness retailer so that for me I got to work out all the time I got to do loads of yoga classes loads of fitness classes and that was my life at the time and I loved it but I didn't really have anything else going on in my life. So I was kind of hiding from everything else that was worrying me. And I was a, te- a yoga teacher, but I wasn't really 
teaching that much. And the day I didn't teach at all when I was down there. And I managed about a year, and the lifestyle just got to me. I got really unhealthy. Right. I couldn't afford to do anything. So even like I went down for all like, of the fitness and yoga classes, I like, eventually couldn't afford to do it. And yeah, I just felt like I fell into like the negative side of London, and I actually became quite insular. So I was like going out quite a lot to begin with, and probably getting in like not the wrong crowds, but I was just kind of doing really like silly things that you do when you're young yeah. and then decided that enough was enough so I kind of didn't socialize so I did the complete opposite and I thought why am I putting myself through this yeah so I cracked one day there was actually a moment when I was on the phone to my mum and I was miserable in my job I had no money I was having to ask for money and a mouse like ran across my bedroom floor <laughs> I screamed terrifying absolutely terrifying a mouse ran across a bedroom floor and I was like, I can't handle this place anymore. And I just <laughs> broke down into tears. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Oh, I just man. want to come home. So a lot of like family stuff happened around that time. It was really unfortunate. So I was up and down to Glasgow quite a bit and I was just like, I don't want to go back down to London. And do you know that way when you just know yep. in your heart, you're like, I can't go back down there again. I can't get back on that train. So I had to just like, I caved, came back. Best thing I've done. Like I've, so don't regret, I always say don't regret anything because it makes you who you are and you yep. have to go through the crap times or the really shitty times to get to yep. the nice things. Definitely. And that's basically why I came back and it was a blip. But it was How long were you there for? A year. A year. So not very long that's at all. That's still quite at that age to yeah. move down there because you lived at home. Yeah. Before you went, so you're the first time yep. you've been out of, out of home, yeah, and yeah. it's a fucking mad city to be moving to Crazy. at that age, you know. Crazy. Um, yeah. you know, I was just there at the weekend, and I don't even know if I would cope going down now with 31 years old, you yeah. know. Um, and I think you either love the lifestyle or you hate it because it's so busy, you yeah. commute a lot. I was actually having that conversation with another client today, mm -hmm. she was talking about maybe wanting to move there. Mm -hmm. I just I did say, I was like, you know, I love London, I love being there. Mm -hmm. But I it's think bad. looking at the, you know, just how just a bit mad it is during the week when, you know, the kind of working hours and stuff, yeah. I was just like, yeah, I don't know if I would no. enjoy living there. I don't know, maybe I would, but fair point for going down. What was the mm. what was the biggest thing you learned in that year, do you think? Apart from how much you love Glasgow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Brand new appreciation yeah. for Glasgow. Uh, I think I learned a lot about my personality and like how I do run away from things a lot. So I have this like coping mechanism through everything I do from <laughs> from like relationships to family to everything. Like it's safer to run away from it, like yeah. work, everything. And I learned about myself that I actually went down there to escape from the mundane. Like I felt like Glasgow was mundane and it wasn't good enough for me. Yeah. But it was really just me like running away from another problem. Yeah. And when I came back, I realized that I have so much, like I have like a great family, I have a great support network. And it's like, I need to appreciate that more. And I've learned over the last like, probably like six months, like to really appreciate my family, my friends, like what I've got, like I'm so lucky. Yeah. Um, and that was like my big thing. And I think it took coming back to realize like how much I'd let my health slip and how much I'd actually let like my love of like fitness and yeah. like just looking after myself slip as well. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you came back. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've been you've been open and honest in the past, mm -hmm. um, social media, blog and stuff about previously having an eating disorder, and you know we talked about this yesterday just to make sure that you are obviously yeah. okay to talk about it on the podcast, which is amazing because it must be a hard thing to talk mm -hmm. about um, and and look back on. So, yeah, just kind of talk to us about about that. You know, back when it first began and when you started to realise it was a problem and how you how you got better and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, so I've been fully recovered in my own way uh, for many years now. So probably going on about eight years now. Brilliant. Um and I really started to like get on well, I suppose when I was in school. Uh 
later on in school, didn't, was never a fan of school, hated it. Don't really know many people that loved school, but I really just disliked it immensely. Hated sports, hated everything, like just wasn't a really nice place to be. And I look back on it relatively fondly with my friends and stuff, but never, I wasn't happy in it. And I think it was this sort of self-deprecating thing where I didn't feel good enough and I felt like I wasn't academic, I wasn't sporty, so I was like, where do I fit in? I was kind of arty, but my school wasn't, was only learning to kind of appreciate that. So I was sort of misguided a lot and didn't really know what to do, didn't really try. So I thought, well, the only thing I can control in this whole situation, and that's the major factor of an eating disorder, is control. The only thing I could control was what I put in my body. And with a lot of teenagers, not just girls, men, yeah. anyone, that is probably like the main factor is that you think, well, this is one thing that I've got all of this time away from my family during a day. I don't have to like eat anything or the opposite of people that have like a binge eating disorder is that they can eat whatever they want and no so one your, has to know. Your problem was you weren't eating. So my personal eating disorder was anorexia nervosa yeah. with sort of bulimic tendencies. And I think it got, it got definitely identified by my parents when I was coming out to the end of school and I was in, going into like my sixth year of high school and I just plummeted in weight. Like my weight just went right down. Like it was so unhealthy. And I, don't, like I won't go into too much detail because it's not very helpful for other people if they are struggling. But I think it started to trigger like a thing with my parents and they were like, there's something not right. So eventually kind of got medical help, which was necessary at the beginning. And yeah. then eventually was getting support for years through the NHS. Yeah. But it actually took me until I was like an adult to sort of make any changes and actually want help. And I think that's like a major factor. We've spoken about this before. Yeah. Is like when someone wants to change something, they need to act. Well, when someone needs to change something, they actually have to want to do it. Yeah. And it took me until, it must have been about, 18, 19, that I really got, I, I kind of got fed up with it. I got fed up of not being able to eat what I want or like do things because it, it stopped me from going out. It stopped me from being a normal teenager. Did you, did you just feel that you c couldn't be around people or like you're yeah, just in the, like how you looked or how you, f was it how you felt? Or? I didn't have the same desires as other people because I didn't want to put things on my body that I had no yeah. control over. So then I was scared to be in a situation where I was out of control. So it made me quite, again, quite insular. Didn't do as much, didn't socialize as much. And I think eventually I got really fed up and wanted to change something. So I started to like, I started to educate myself about and my problem was kind of stemmed out of anxiety more than anything. So it was like a kind of social anxiety thing that dr drove me to sort of manifest this eating disorder, which is hilarious now because I'm not in any way anxious about social situations, yeah. but I think you have to learn that that was your trigger. Of course. And that's, that's how it manifested. But yeah, eventually I started to sort of educate myself around food and I realized that food to me wasn't scary. So... I allowed myself to like gain weight and it became easier and at the beginning it was all very much like healthy and you know I didn't put anything like unhealthy in my body and now I've got to that really nice like balance point in my life where I kind of allow myself to eat absolutely anything I don't even think about food in the same way but I still struggle with sort of having this high functioning anxiety that I manage in a different way yep. and I don't manage it through food and yep. that was my coping mechanism. Okay, that's great. Mm. So would you say that you have a better relationship with food now or like a really good relationship with food? I think I've completely, like personally and everyone around me, I've completely healed my relationship with food. I lo like I love food. I don't overthink about it and I don't not think about it. I kind of, I, like, I love eating out. I love cooking. Like, I love going out for meals with people. I you love, just like, told me you're doing food. a cooking course in, so it's <laughs> fucking class, man. So, like, so good. that's, it's complete 360, oh, like, 180 yeah. on my attitude towards food. But I think that's because I realised that food wasn't my issue. Right. And with most people with an eating disorder, it's nothing to do with food. 
And some people's eating disorders aren't food based; they're exercise based. Yeah. Or and I that triggered a bit with me probably when I was with the fitness company that I worked for, in that my food was fine. Like I didn't think about food, and I was like in my twenties and wasn't thinking about food. But then I was exercising excessively. Like I exercise. I didn't go out because I went to the gym all the time. And there's a balance that you can strike where you still see your friends, you still do things. Yeah. So I was kind of off kilter there and I was so like I was so very like underweight I right. suppose whereas now like I'm totally healthy weight weight's not really a big issue with it like you can be any weight and be healthy and unhealthy it just de- depends yeah, on your body shape yeah, of course. but it's what your attitude towards it is and I think if you fill a gap with something as equally unhealthy like a behavior that's equally unhealthy it's still an issue so it's finding where you can have like a full spectrum of things that you do and that n- none of them kind of overtake the other. Whereas if you're kind of overthinking food and everything else kind of falls to the side, that's a problem. If you're overthinking exercise to the point where you don't want to see anyone, you don't want to socialize, it's different when it's your job, I suppose where like you obviously have to think about exercise yeah. all the time, but yeah. you still see your friends and you still socialise and you don't talk about it to everyone all the time, that's a healthy balance. Yeah. And it's the same with any, anything, like alcohol, drugs, you know, like if something is all-consuming, it becomes a problem. But if you can strike a balance where everything's kind of on an equilibrium, then that's when you know you've kind of started to make some positive changes. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> How d- so just kind of like yeah. processing what you were saying that I've maybe picked up a bit wrong, but did you mean did you mean that like you sorted your relationship with food, but mm-hmm. then your mental health took a dip because that was the main problem, or was it have I picked that up wrong? Or? No, you're probably right, because I obviously still had like massive anxiety issues and my mental health was very much in decline when I was when I was very underweight and yeah, very, like at that. my worst unwell. But that's all kind of mass because you don't think about anything else and you don't have the cognitive ability to. Yeah. Or you're just all consumed by it. So when that all these feelings start to surface, when you become a little bit healthier, you just start to like try and focus on other things. Yeah. Your mind races and like personally I found that I had all of these feelings that I'd never really dealt with before that were backdated from when all of this started. Yeah. It took me so long to kind of get back on to a place where I could like deal with them all. So like I went to therapy for a bit um, and then eventually found like yoga really helped with that for me. Um, just like having an outlet of something that you can sort of process your thoughts and like being able to talk to people as well. Like I have, I have like a best friend who has like similar sort of had like a similar sort of background, but not the same problem as me. Yeah. But we both kind of are able to have like this safe space where we talk to each other about things that are going on in our head. And it's quite nice to have someone like that that you can sort of process it. And then also the blog. So I wrote a lot about my issues and I wrote a lot about how I was feeling and like used it as a kind of outlet and it's all kind of changed over the years but initially it was all very much me just trying to cope with stuff that was going on in my head and make sense of it. Did it help? It definitely, for me it did because I'm, I I like to talk as much as I like to write so I like to write everything down and process it and edit it and figure out what I'm actually thinking and I think I used to write diaries and stuff as well, like just r- like loads of coping strategies yeah. that you need to be able to process what's going on in your head. And I think with anyone with any kind of anxiety, depression, like being able to have an outlet of some kind is so useful. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you just get whether it's to somebody else <coughs> or just yourself. Yeah. Like writing, I think getting the getting stuff off your mm. chest is just so important rather than bottling yeah. the shit up or like not yeah. not like dealing with it or like admitting it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Which is obviously hard but something I done I was uh, alcohol free for six years in May, so I'd done a podcast about that yeah. and as I was sitting talking about it I actually just felt like a mad mm-hmm. kind of release almost because I'd maybe been talking really about stuff fun, I hadn't yeah. talked about in a while and there's obviously like things that you do kind of block out in terms of like 
don't think about it and stuff. But when you do talk about it, you you realise mm -hmm. like how far you've came or like where the way you used to be, and it's important to to realise that. So yeah, I just think that obviously getting stuff like off your chest. Even you sitting, you're talking this right now. You might mm -hmm. listen to this podcast back and think, fuck, like that was good to to get that out or talk about it. But the fact you are talking about it is is so good mm -hmm. because like as I said, the, some of the podcasts that I've done, that I've found like quite difficult at points or I've thought to myself, is it too much? Am I being too honest here? Or you're putting yourself out there for people to listen to, essentially. But when there's people who have said that it's helped them or that mm -hmm. they, it made them think about some of their own, the way they live their own lifestyle and stuff, and stuff yeah. then obviously that's, that's the whole point in doing it, isn't mm -hmm. it? I know. I think like sometimes I used to worry that I sh shared too much, especially like on the internet, like yeah. with my like Instagram and blog and eventually I started to not feel bad about it because it was such a good way for me of to course. cope and it was like you know if anyone else didn't look at it it didn't matter yeah but because I shared it it was for me and I don't like it just was it was just this great way it's just this great outlet and I think the internet has changed so massively since I started doing it, it was like years and years and years yeah. ago but it's, for me, it's always just been a safe space. It's never, as long as it helps one person, it What's doesn't that? even have to, but if it does help but I'm one sure person, it does. it's a massive <laughs> And And um, I'm sure you've had people contact you regarding your blog yeah, yeah. or something, mm -hmm. or a social media post, or mm -hmm. comments on your social media posts mm -hmm. that have obviously reiterated that that actually happens, yeah. which, is, which is an amazing thing. So I think about that as well. I think about, because obviously... I deal with clients. I want to talk about mm -hmm. them a lot. I want to share their progress. I want to talk about training. I want to talk about nutrition. And I'll maybe not post about my own journey for yeah. maybe like months. But then I'll probably have done that on purpose because I'm like, nah, I posted about myself a couple of months ago or a month ago. But then I'll make a post and like someone yeah. says how... Mm -hmm. inspiring that is or how much that's helped so really I'm not doing it because of other people sometimes mm -hmm. like oh I think I've posted about myself again I was talking about drinking again mm -hmm. but really but when people are getting something from that I really shouldn't uh -huh. care about that and I think like obviously knowing you and knowing your kind of social media and stuff but also your journey and your like your background and everything and I think it is so important that you remind people of exactly where you've come from. Yeah. And I think acknowledging it yourself is a sign of growth and a sign of being like able to just be okay and to totally just accept who you were. And that's not not you because yeah. it still always will of be course, a part yeah. of you. Yeah. And I think if you try and block things out too much, and you're right, like I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about all the things that like you've asked me that question and there's like a million things rushing into my head and I think, because you do block out a lot day yeah. to day. Yeah, definitely. But it's really helpful to be able to talk about it and say, yeah, that did happen. Yeah. And this was m my story. Yeah, of course. And it's made me who I am. Because if I hadn't gone through that or if I hadn't made a change, I don't know where I'd be. Exactly. But also, like as you, you actually said it before, like no matter how much like I maybe look back and actually want to just disappear into a hole or burst uh -huh. out crying or cringe mm -hmm. at some of my mm -hmm. past behaviour or some of the regrets I have I, I wouldn't be sitting here d talking to you right now yeah. if that didn't happen if I had just Absolutely. if I had just been fucking alright and coasted through mm -hmm. my fucking early 20s and you know just stayed in the job I was in at the time I wouldn't be here I wouldn't be doing this and I'm glad I'm here doing this so yeah. all that stuff that I don't like about myself at least I made it through that and it's made me this kind of strong, determined person that I am today, and I'm like actually thankful for that mm -hmm. because I'd rather be here doing this and doing Iron Man and yeah, yeah. you know helping other people rather than doing a job I didn't actually like mm -hmm. just to fucking get a salary or something yeah. like that, you know. I think I heard you speak in one of your pod. I think it was your sixth year podcast where you talked about fate, and you didn't know if you believed in fate or not, but there's something happens that yeah. you're like, okay, is there a reason that happened? Because and then it kind of, it puts you at a crossroads sometimes. There's usually like a pinnacle moment yeah. of something that happens that takes you one way or the other. And it's not always a good thing. It's not of always course. a bad thing. But you think, 
what's triggered that? Like, what? And it always just makes me curious to think, well, I remember something happened. Like, I had, like, a really sad tragedy in my family. And that was, like, right when I was kind of, it sounds daft, but I was kind of in that mind of, should I bother recovering? Or can I just be unwell for the rest of my life? Because it's, yep. weirdly, it sounds really strange, but it was easier. Of course it's easier. Because of it's, course it is. it's so hard to make a change. And that thing happened that, changed our whole family and I kind of sat up and I thought oh crap like I need to do something I actually looked at myself in the mirror and I was shocked and I was really upset and I yep. thought life is so precious so precious and I thought I can't live the life that I've lived for the last how many years yep. and just think this is it this well, is course. all I'm going to do for That's the rest it. of my life Totally, and it's obviously sad that it's mm. taken something like that yeah. for us to think like that, mm. but, you know, it, it has, and something like that is, you know, somebody's going to go one of two ways, yeah. um, and that's what I was talking about, fate, because yeah. I'd fucking stopped drinking for two yeah. months when that when, when that happened, and I lost my dad, and if I hadn't, you know, I would have, yeah. be, it was a Saturday, it was like four, four o'clock in the afternoon, I would have probably been drunk when I found out. Yeah. So fuck knows where, what would have happened. So it's something has something made me stop drinking in mm -hmm. May and not after that. Yeah. Um, and then I, because that cause I had stopped, I took that right path. Mm -hmm. um, and that, as you say, it would be so much easier mm -hmm. just to say fuck it and get steaming. Yeah. Uh, I think it shows like a strength of character that's not even accessible at times. Like, of there's something that's like built within you mm -hmm. that you have to like that has to be triggered at a time when you don't even think it's going to happen. Yeah. And I think it, it shows like who you are as a person. I think you could either go off the rails in any way, like whether you're like you seem like a strong character and you've never yeah. had a problem. Yeah, of course. You could go off the rails. Yep. Or you could just manage it and think, no, I'm going to make a good situation out of something. Definitely, definitely. And uh, again, hope, the hope would be that anyone listening to this right now, if something bad has yeah. happened to them in a month, six months, a year, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, hearing these kind of things makes them pay, take that, uh, that better choice rather than mm -hmm. going into the ground almost. Definitely. So, no, it's, um, it's, it's good. It's good that you've uh, been willing to talk about that stuff, mm -hmm. man. It's, it's epic. So, I want to talk about training now then, because unless there's anything else you want to talk about on that, because you said some stuff was going into your head, so yeah. feel free to bat away. I think the only thing I would say is, like, if anyone, I mean, I didn't really go into much detail, but, like, if anyone did struggle or was listening and thought, mm, I'm not sure, like, if someone I know or someone, like, how do you approach that subject, it's literally just a case of talking to somebody or sitting them down and just like identifying that you've noticed things and not making them feel bad about it or yep. if you feel like you're in like a situation where something's not right or you're kind of all consumed by something that you don't quite understand but it's like blocking things out like behaviors or you know you maybe notice that you do things a lot or you're isolating yourself it's just asking for help and like everyone wants to help you and I of think course. the more that we talk about it the better. Yeah, definitely. Um, the biggest fear for me when I was going through, like, you know, I knew I had a problem for a long time, but mm. the biggest fear for me was, um, you know, telling or admitting that to yep. say my dad mm -hmm. because, you know, the fear of him being angry or, like, mm. not wanting to do me anymore or whatever, whereas when he did actually find out, he, he just wanted to help, and that would have mm. been the same for any of my friends. In my other family, people but just want to see you well. It's scary to mm -hmm. think to talk to people about certain things, but yeah, if anybody truly cares about you, they're never going to. They well, they shouldn't be yeah. judging you and then um, making you feel bad or worse about mm -hmm. it. it. Should just be a case of trying to help. But again, that's the hard, the hard bit of actually yeah. asking making for help. That step. Definitely. Um, so looking at training. Okay. You train at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, you said you overtrained when you were in London. Yeah, I did. So, yeah, like, how did you get from that to finding a better balance and yeah. things? How how did and, and what is your current um, your current routine? Yeah, <laughs> I finally I like 
finally taken so many years to get to a point where I actually really like training. So I've like had so many bursts and spurts of motivation throughout the years and used to do like a lot of fitness classes. Yeah. So that was kind of my way of keeping fit, I suppose, and hated running like with a passion, like I absolutely hated it. Used to do yoga, that was kind of it. And I noticed a lot when I was doing yoga, like I'm not, I wasn't very strong. Like I used to have like really, it was always a big thing of mine is I used to have really scrawny arms, like I hated my arms. And I was like, oh, I'd really love to be able to do like push-ups and now like I can, but yeah. I didn't really know how to get into it. And I hated the gym. So I would like do fitness classes and then went to London, couldn't afford to do fitness classes. So kind of got a cheap gym membership. So I used to throw weights about and not really know what I'm doing. But I've always like followed like fitness bloggers and figure stuff out and now finally I've got to that place where I run quite regularly so that's again kind of a meditative thing for me like I'm not really oh me too totally that's mm. the biggest thing for running for me it's just the clear head and so, the thinking yeah I was talking to my friend Stephen about it today like I honestly hate running it's fucking hard <laughs> <laughs> but it's so hard. I love it at the same time because yeah. I kind of just switch off and don't think about anything. Even if I've got like friggin' like crazy tunes in my ears, like I don't think about anything. I just look about and I think my feet are taking me here. Like I'm doing this. My lungs are good enough to yeah, go. Definitely. Like my heart's pumping. Like it's a great feeling when you finish a run and you've kind of just processed stuff that's going on in your head. That's therapy, man. Definitely, it's free therapy. Everyone, get your shoes on and go run. Listen to this podcast. You'll fucking you hate run. it, but just keep going. <laughs> I know your feet will hurt, but you'll be fine. Um, and I also love feeling strong. So it was always an issue I had when I was like younger and not very well. Is like I was yeah. so weak. Yeah. Like I was physically so weak, and I had no muscle at all. Like completely wasted away. It's taken such a long time. Like even past recovery, like, you can put on weight, but you're not going to put on muscle, like, yeah. you're just going to put on weight, yeah. and even though I was doing yoga and stuff, it wasn't really enough, so started, like, lifting weights and doing, like, conditioning and stuff, and now I've got to a point where I probably train in the gym, at the moment, definitely, like, four times a week. That's good, that's a lot. And I might do, like, a run, or, like, change in a run for that. And, like, maybe do, like, a yoga class or two yoga classes, maybe, depending. Yeah. Um, but I finally have got to a point where, like, I've I've been through phases where I, like, hated my body even though I was well. Like, I've just, I've put on weight and I've, like, eaten too much. Yeah. And not been in training and not been bothered. But I've kind of got to this point where I'm, like, I'm so happy. Like, I don't care. Like, I could be X weight and, you know, not ripped. But I feel good and I feel, like super strong and I can lift things and yeah. can lift the door open and I think once you've been at the like the rock bottom of course it's so nice to be able to see such a difference and know that your body's capable of something some major gains going on there some serious gains I'm loving it <laughs> hey, what a hey, what do you enjoy most about uh, lifting like in terms of like enjoyment to do what's your favorite stuff to get in Ooh. the gym and do so I finally discovered deadlifts like properly, so I love them, because I've always had like, cause I'm a yogi, people won't really know what I'm talking about, but we do like a lot of push, so like I'm quite strong, like my triceps are strong from yep. like pushing up, like yep. little like tricep push ups, and like my chest is relatively strong, but it kind of like messed up my posture a lot, so I started to like curve in a lot, so I went to like my friend who's a PT and he was talking to me about like my shoulder like my shoulders are absolutely buggered from yoga so it's not always good because I did too much of right. it and I worked on a lot of like back stuff and like kind of posterior chain movements and things and started like working like my legs more because yeah. I wasn't really doing that skim leg day man I know I Wrong was skim leg day and um, <laughs> now I've found squats and deadlifts and like back stuff and working on pull-ups and just so stuff like that. Basically, so basically you like all the big epic stuff. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's fun. Like it is really good fun. Such a good feeling getting stronger. It really Yay. is. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Like I see the, I love it when, um, you know, a, a client goes on to the more complex moves and mm -hmm. y they get that PB. You can literally just yeah. see them fucking so happy like mm -hmm. when they finish that lift it's such a good thing to see like yeah. because I remember that feeling. I still get that it's feeling it's a rush you know I mean? like yeah. it's an absolute rush and I think if you if you're of a kind of personality which I think we both are is like you need that sort of outlet you need that thing that's going to give you that instant hit yeah, yeah <laughs> almost I, 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 that's 
So it's not a bad thing. Of course. It's a healthy way to be if you're balancing it out. Yeah, totally. And again, like, people say to me a lot, because mm-hmm. right, I, do, I do a lot of training, right? Mm-hmm. But that's just because it's who I am and mm-hmm. it replaces the void that drinking yep. gave me and, mm-hmm. you know, d- I'll, I'll let deal with it, as I say, it's like my therapy, you know? Mm-hmm. So I do a lot and it's because I want to. It's not because I feel I have to. It's not because I feel that I need to do it to show off on social media. It's not because yeah. whatever else. It's because I genuinely love it mm-hmm. and it makes me happy. So p- I always get the, I but you need, to, you need more balance. And then I'm like, but mm. balance is different from yeah. what it is to you to mm-hmm. what it is to me to what it is to that person like Absolutely. their balance is pro- like not exercising mm-hmm. or exercising once twice a week I want to do it every day or six days a week but that's right for me you know it's not too much mm-hmm. alright I'm sitting here really tired right now but that's <laughs> just because my sleep's crap at the moment but it's good for me mm-hmm. and I'm, it makes me happy so like I understand why people tell me it yeah. but yeah, it's definitely va- balance is not the same for everyone, I guess, um, and especially when you know it's you're as I say, it's like filling a void or something. Like you know, I do yeah. I do need it, and I do need it regularly in my life. And if I go too long without it, it I, 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 I do get a bit kind of like, uh, mm-hmm. like I need to go if I'm on holiday or something. Like I need mm-hmm. to work out, whatever. But um, but don't get me wrong, I I see. I do I do other things in my life and Exactly um, and you can tell that and it's not it's not like you're doing it because you feel like you have to and I think that's the main yeah. main thing that I took from that is a lot of people think I have to go to the gym yeah. or I have to get this weight or I have to get or I have to look a certain way of for course. my beach holiday that I'm gonna then just sit on the beach the whole time and <laughs> you know, drink pina coladas or whatever. Aye, aye. Like I think that's not to me like the reason for doing it. I think like I do it purely because I actually really get a good feeling from it. And yeah. it doesn't have to be a certain thing. Like I'll have to be in the gym lifting like yeah. every day or every like four days a week. Yeah. Like if I can only get access to my trainers and the outside world, I'll go run. Or if I can just do some yoga, yeah. I'll do that. And it's more like the what is it that the endorphins? That ah, you get well, from it's it? it's essentially what we're talking about in terms of like mental health and like uh-huh. how we're dealing with that kind of stuff. You know, and it's we, like, like people that suffer from any kind of anxiety, depression. Like, there's been studies to show that it's huge factor. Like, oh, being able to replace but dead uh, feelings, especially with something that's going to make you feel good. 100%. That's not uh, like bad. Well, not bad. I hate bad and good, but that's not going to be detrimental to your health. No, of course. Like, I genuinely used to deal with stress from my work mm-hmm. with drink. I yeah. used to be so stressed to a point where I was like, I can't wait for six o'clock to go to the pub yeah. to get smashed. Mm-hmm. And that's not good, no. especially doing that regularly. Whereas then yeah. I stopped drinking and I found the gym and I was like, I can't wait for six o'clock to go and smash some weights. Yeah. So it's like replacing an evil of something that made me walked out feeling great, whereas Absolutely. I'd wake up after the drinking feeling like an absolute bag of shit. So uh-huh. it's like, and you, like you never really regret a workout. Of course, I um, even when they suck, you, s- you still tried and still you still went and you, you still worked out essentially, uh-huh. even if you, you d- even up. if it didn't feel great yet essentially. Mm-hmm. But like I've had so many clients who have came to me, and you know one of the reasons they have started is because they're dealing with depression or me- bad mental yeah. health, and I've yet to find one that hasn't told me that it's not helped. Or that mm. has told me well, that's it, right? <laughs> one that has. <laughs> I've yet to find one that has oh, told me that hasn't yeah, yeah. helped because uh-huh. it's, it's genuinely helped everybody. And does everybody stick to it? No. People fall back and they don't come back sometimes, and they, you know you can tell they fell back into their old habits. But for the ones that do stick it out, what what a difference it makes. That's amazing. It makes to their life. And some people have said it's like better than drugs that they take. And um, and for me, it saved my life. Do you know what I mean? If I didn't find it. I exercise, you know, I probably would have ended up yeah. drinking again, to be honest. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. Like you're loving your training again and um, yeah, enjoying, enjoying the fact that I'm looking, enjoy seeing your your runs on social media and yeah, how well you've done getting that. Getting a wee bit better. Aye, like, don't ever give yourself a hard time in terms of your time or anything like mm. that because it's like, it's so individual and you might go out one day and run really fast when you least expect it and you might go out one day thinking I'm going to smash this and get a shit time yeah. and that's just it's just happens sleep and food and hydration and all that 
depending on how it is, it affects mm -hmm. that. So I uh, just don't give you yourself a hard time because you don't get okay. a good 5K time, all right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've got some questions. Like, okay. Uh, I can't remember them all. So in fact, the first one was why or what's the difference between yoga and hot yoga? Okay, so both are yoga. The f just normal, like, vinyasa, hatha. Vin water? Vinya <laughs> Never heard it. Vinyasa <laughs> is basically just your movements between postures. So it means that you dynamically flow between postures. Okay. So all yoga is pretty much the same basis without going too deep into it. But hot yoga is just basically done in a hot room. And you probably do less in hot yoga. I know hot yoga teachers are going to hate me for saying that. I think it's a lot simpler to get into because you can't physically do as much when it's scorching heat. So you kind of move around less, but you can yep. have whole postures. And personally, advocate for someone that's never done yoga, don't go to a hot yoga class. You might want to get into it. I don't see many benefits to it, but that's probably the same as your clients saying that they don't understand yoga. So yeah, okay. I think everyone's got their own thing. Okay, cool. That was uh, Kirsty asked that. Okay. And Siobhan has asked, how many times should you do yoga in a week? I mean, depending on... I know there's probably not a right or yeah, wrong answer. It's like exercising, isn't it? But uh -huh, what would you like recommend? How many, how many times do you exercise? I think she's on? asking, you know, she trains. Okay. So maybe three, four times a week. So on one, top of that... One class a week would do, yeah. probably. Two classes cool. would be great. Awesome. Depends on her time. Nice one. I... Uh, should it be done prior or post to lifting weights? Probably before. Yep. Yes. I, would I actually say have some clients that have came straight from yoga because yes. there's yoga in the Pentagon, there's Pentagon, yoga down yeah. the stairs, mm -hmm. or they're going to yoga. So, yeah. Both those? are good. Both yep. are good. But I think if you're going to stretch before you lift, you're going to get more range of motion and depth, and you know, you'll probably feel. Yeah more in the zone. Okay, cool. Um, what's the hardest <laughs> move you can do? <laughs> uh, I don't know anymore. There's one, right, you'll need to Google it. Right. There's one called Bird of Paradise. I can do that. But it's... I'm intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically where you're standing on one leg and you've got your arm wrapped around your other leg and your foot's in the air. But <laughs> it sounds really complicated. Uh, I can do that one uh, on a good day. Oh, I'm just getting loads of tropical birds here. I'll find it <laughs> later. Um, I just look like a flamingo when I'm doing it. I Do you need to be super flexible? I'm assuming no. No, you get more flexible as you do it. Yes. Yeah. But don't go in thinking that you're going to become a yoga superstar. Like, Why not? Like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Impatience, man. Yeah. Impatience. Patience. Uh, awesome. Thanks for those amazing answers. Uh, Thanks for the question. No, no problem. I've got quite a few there. That's cool. Blog. Yes. Uh, how long have you been doing it for? Is it bad? I can't remember. On and off, maybe seven years, I want to say. Long time. Yeah. Where can people find it? So it's on my Instagram bio, at Robin Does Yoga. But it's also called like eatings and thinkings. It's just a WordPress blog. Like it's not, I don't have put any money behind it at yeah, all. Yeah. Like it's literally just a place for me to write rubbish about my life and my thoughts and everything. Do you have any goals for it in terms of like progressing it? Or are you just happy for it to be what it is in terms of yeah. writing down thoughts, feelings and hoping people read it? Yeah, I think for me, I love writing a lot. Yep. And it's working out what kind of writer I am. So I'm not trained in any way in writing, but I love... You're like, very good at it. Thank you. No, I genuinely mean that, because obviously I've read your blogs yeah. and you helped me that time yeah. when I sent you mine over yeah. and you kind of reworded it and it was much better <laughs> after oh. you fucking done it. So, Thanks. no, you're, you're very, you're dead good at it. Yeah. I, lo like, I love writing and I love like, talking about topical things, I suppose, as well as speaking about mental health issues and relationships and like do a lot about like being single or like in a relationship or whatever it's stuff like that that yep. comes up and things how like things like that can affect you and why it's good to a big one that I did recently was 
having like 26 goals because I just turned 20. I was literally, I was yeah. honestly going to say, I read your, read your last yeah. blog and you, you saw the 26 stuff. I was going yeah. to ask, how's that going? Um, <laughs> it's a bit stunted. Still got 25 yeah. to do that. I went to like <laughs> one of the restaurants on my list. Nice. And the last one, like the second blog after that blog was about like being single and how like I accepted all of that and God, I'm starting to talk about relationships now, but no, it's, it was all about accepting being like alone, like being okay with like being on your own yeah. and whether like that's not always going to be the case, hopefully, <laughs> but you're still very just, young. <laughs> yeah. And also just like people being, I don't, that was my last one, my 26th one, which I felt like I could score off. Cause I'm like, do you know, what? I'm like totally happy where I am, no matter what my situation um, so there's a few ones in there that I'm kind of working on. And one of them is writing more and doing more and like potentially getting published yep. somewhere, even like, I don't know, the smallest publication. So if there's anyone out listening <laughs> that wants to publish me, that'd be great. Of course. No. Yeah. Oh, that's cool though. Um, keep it up. Like it's, it's like me doing these podcasts, you know, yeah. you just never know yeah, who's listening. Yeah, man, you just never know who's listening. Sometimes I'm like sitting, you know, I, I, when I'm doing them on my own, I plan them for a Sunday, mm-hmm. um, because Sunday's like a day off, so I've got a bit more time to just kind of plan it out and do it, but sometimes I'm sitting there on a Sunday, and, and just like, I'm like, oh, fucking, just can't be bothered doing this tonight, yeah. wait till next week, but then I do it, and I'm like, why did I wait about, man, I enjoyed doing that, it was, mm-hmm. it was good, um, and people are listening, might not be, may not be, may not be the biggest fan base in the world, you know, might not be hitting the, t- the charts on iTunes, but people are listening and that's the main thing. Yeah. Uh, I think we're getting to the end there, aye? There's uh, any any opportunity for you to talk about anything else you want to talk about, any questions for me, anything oh, I before we go? Oh, I should have questions. There would have been none. Uh, aye, anything at all? When are you coming to yoga? Oh, God, I knew this was coming. <laughs> I will, I will get, I will definitely yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. What, where are we, July? So halfway through the year, I will do yoga class this year. <laughs> One yoga class this year? No, I mean like I'll start. Okay. If you okay. promise me it will help with my, with my mm-hmm. lifting and flexibility mm-hmm. in terms of getting into movements easier and being less tight, I'm up for it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, okay. On, on that note then, like mm-hmm. where do you teach? Where can people go to your yeah. classes? So I know. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this is for Scott. Um, <laughs> no, I teach at a gym up in Fort de Das called Everyday Athletes. So they do everything from like Mai Tai. So weird that I go there for physio yeah, and do, I work you? here and you do training. Well, the physio there. room I Aye. do the yoga in. Nice. Like the big room. Yep. Uh, so I do that class on a Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. And I teach in my friend's gym, which is the Fit Principal, which is actually in this building. <laughs> right above me? Yeah. Uh, so I teach here on a Thursday night. So those are like my permanent classes. And Thursday uh, at 7. 7. And then at 7 p.m. And I teach at Infinity, which is the yoga cl- studio that I was talking about yep. right at the beginning that kind of got me into yoga. I teach a lot of like non-Hakita classes like randomly. So I post... Every week I post like the classes I'm doing for yep. the week. So sometimes I update it if I've like got a random like yeah. cover class or something. But most classes, like the Fit Principal one and the Infinity ones are totally f- like anyone can come. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I so saw you were working at Future Fitness with oh Alana. Oh my goodness, yes. That so just happened and I totally forgot about that one. Oh, um, you enjoyed it that much? You <laughs> forgot, did you? Oh, Alana's going to hate me. <laughs> so um, yeah, what's happening there? Yeah, so we're doing... A little mashup of boot camp and yoga. So it's going to be working on the format of 30 minutes of boot camp, 30 minutes of yoga after. When's that? So that's on a Wednesday night at 7.30. Right, I live south side. You're going to come to that one. I will come to that, given that my Wednesday 7 o'clock cancels okay. <laughs> one, one if week. You're if I'm free, I'm coming to that. Okay, amazing. Promise. Because yeah. um, that'd be cool. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. really good. Sorry, Lana. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new thing. It's okay. fine. Like, she'll understand. Uh, yeah, so let, very last one. Goals for the future. What have you got? Have you got big plans coming up? Or are you just basically focusing on your yoga? What's happening? Um, so I do have plans. There's a lot of plans that I'm going to choose not to put out on the internet. <laughs> Um, oh, shit, I hope I didn't no, uh, no, reveal no, no, anything no, no, no. unnecessarily. I don't think anyone would have caught on. You're fine. 
Um, so yeah, I'm like planning on doing something quite exciting, bit of a career change, but we'll, that'll, that'll do. Um, and yeah, just teach as much as possible. If anyone like comes to me for yoga advice, write as much as I can. Just kind of follow my own path rather than the nine to five, because I've realized that's not for me. Yep. So Sounds good. Yeah. I love it. And where can, what's your online where folk can get you? So uh, is your Instagram just basically the best Robin, thing? Yeah, at Robin Does Yoga. You can DM me. My email address is on there. My blog is on there. Um, I have a Facebook page that just kind of posts my blogs and stuff okay. as well. So that's just Robin Does Yoga. And that's where you can find me. Nice one. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on and having a thank chat. You. Um I hope it was okay for you. I and hope that was helpful. No, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. So yeah, thanks so much.